Good afternoon. I thank Iran Academia for inviting me to speak to you today on the issue of transitional justice and seeking truth that probably will be relevant for any future democratic government in Iran. It is the desire of thousands of Iranians and family members of victims of violation of human rights to see one day justice and to seek truth. I would like to quote a human rights activist whose family members were killed in Iran. I quote, the most important precondition for establishing a new society in Iran is the complete break with the current and prevailing laws, ideology and attitudes, which have systematically reacted towards the political opposition and legitimate demand of the people with prison, torture and executions. An Iranian society can only be free <clears throat> when the institutionalization of democracy, the rule of law, respect for human rights and social justice is realized. It is not enough to bring those individuals who were responsible for gross violation of human rights to justice alone. It is also necessary to hold the entire system accountable, which is not only based on discrimination and injustice, but it also, for its survival, suppresses and eliminates the entire political opposition. This is the only way to prevent future absolutist governments from regaining power again. End of the quotation. For the illustration, very brief, the current and forward-looking perspectives. <clears throat> One, we have currently widespread human rights violations, including gender-based violence. Second, there are a large number of victims and perpetrators. A culture of impunity is prevailing. And fourth, there is no judicial system in Iran to address violation of human rights committed by state agents. The forward-looking perspective includes victims are recognized, Perpetrators are prosecuted, tried, and duly punished. Recurrence prevented. Basic norms and values reaffirmed. And fifth, rule of law, respect for human rights, and reconciliation is realized. The definition on transitional justice, very briefly, the transitional justice is dealing with the past for a better future. Transitional justice is based on four pillars. The right to truth, accountability and combating impunity, the right to a remedy and reparation, and four guarantees of non-recurrence. The right to truth is an imprescriptible right of victims and their families to know the truth about what happened to them or their family members. It is a right recognized in several international treaties and instruments by national, regional, and international jurisprudence. I refer to the declaration of the UN Secretary General in 2011 to annually commemorate 24th of March, right to Truth Day. It is the state's duty to give effect to the right to know, and this includes to provide true truth, to preserve the memory of what happened, to take measures to prevent recurrence, and fourth, to ensure the independent, effective operation of the judiciary. And fifth, to benefit from a truth commission to establish 
facts on violation of human rights that occurred in the past. The second pillar of the transitional justice is accountability and combating impunity. The right to justice obliged the state to investigate grave human rights violations, to prosecute the perpetrators, and if their guilt is established, to punish them duly. Judicial accountability means not only to be punitive, but also to be preventive and norm-affirming, to respect fair trial principles, and no blanket amnesties to war crimes, crimes against humanity and genocide. And fourth, we have national hybrid and international courts dealing with universal jurisdiction. You may recall the case of Hamid Nouri, the first Iranian case dealt by a Swedish court applying the universal jurisdiction or the case of a former Syrian military intelligence officer who was convicted in Germany in January 2022 for torture and crimes against humanity. We have hybrid courts in different countries, meaning that national and international judges work together. We have hybrid courts in East Timor, in Kosovo, Sierra Leone, Cambodia, and Lebanon. And lastly, international courts. We had two international criminal tribunals for former Yugoslavia, ICTY, from 1993 to 2017, and international criminal tribunal for Rwanda, ICTR, functioning from 2000, uh, from, sorry, from 1994 to 2016. And of course, we have the International Criminal Court functioning since the 1st July of 2002. <clears throat> this slide shows to you the new accountability mechanism within the UN system. We have three new established account accountability mechanisms. First, the International Independent an impartial mechanism for Syria, which was established by the UN General Assembly in 2016. Second, the UNITAD in Iraq, the United Nations investigative team to promote accountability for crimes committed by Daesh and ISIL, established by the UN Security Council in 2017. And we have the independent investigative mechanism for Myanmar, which was created by the Human Rights Council in 2018. The question as whether the gross violation of human rights that occurred over the past decade in the Islamic Republic of Iran will be subject of any international investigations in the near future has to be yet answered. The third pillar of the transitional justice is the right to a remedy and reparation. It is the state's obligation to make reparation to victims of violation of human rights and the possibility for the victim to seek redress from the perpetrator. We have five types of reparations, restitution, compensation, rehabilitation, satisfaction, and guarantees of non-repetition. The fourth pillar of transitional justice is guarantees of non-recurrence. There are five points to be taken into consideration. One, there should be fundamental institutional reforms to ensure respect for the law of law and human rights. Second, to restore or to establish public trust and confidence in governmental institutions. Today, there is a lack, there is a fundamental lack of trust and confidence between the population and governmental institution in Iran. Third, there should be an independent, impartial, and effective operation of the judiciary working in accordance with international standards and norms. 
those public officials, such as military, security police, and intelligence officers, who are or who were personally responsible for gross violation of human rights, shall not continue to serve in state institutions, the so-called wetting system. Fifth, there should be effective institutions of civilian oversight over military and security forces and intelligence agencies, including legislative oversight bodies. Six, there should be civilian complaint procedures, such as ombudsman, public advocates, and national human rights institutions. None of them are existing currently in Iran. Of course, in Iran, we have this Iran Islamic Human Rights Commission, which is not working in accordance with international standards and norms. And seventh, the last point, there should be comprehensive and permanent human rights training program for public officials and employees, in particular those involved in military, security, police, intelligence, and judicial sectors. During my assignment with the Office of the UN High Commission for Human Rights, I carried out human rights training programs for the member of the armed forces, including military, police, and security officers in Rwanda, in Sudan, in Thailand, Lao PDR, or Laos, and to some extent in Hong Kong because I belong to the first generation of human rights officers that were sent to different countries to implement human rights at the field level. There are two slides here on seeking truth in other countries. The first slide indicates truth commissions with different names. The second slide where I have put purposely three democratic countries showing to you that even these countries looked into their history and human rights violations. Canada, Germany, and South Korea. In Canada, Aboriginal children were separated from their families and parents, and they were kept in the so-called residential schools to indoctrinate the children into a new culture, the culture of the legally dominant Euro-Christian Canadian society. The Canadian Truth and Reconciliation Commission looked into the past from 1872 to 1996. You may recall the recent visit of the Pope to Canada apologizing to family members of victims. The second one, Germany, which uh, or where investigations were carried out to look into the consequences of the former East German communist government. And the third, South Korea. In South Korea, we had two truth and Re reconciliation commissions. While the first commission investigated the death of citizens in South Korea between 1975 in 1987. The second commission dealt with incidents in Korean history which occurred from Japan's rule of Korea in 1910 through the end of the military regime in South Korea in 1993. As an example, I would like to refer to the Iran tribunal campaign. About 80 survivors and family members of victims appeared before the Iran tribunal in London in June 2012 to testify on gross violations of human rights and to hold the Islamic Republic of Iran accountable for its crimes against humanity. As a step forward, there are two recommendations. One, to continue the efforts made by the Iran tribunal campaign to collect, to process, and evaluate systematically data on violation of human rights during the different periods of its 43 ruling of the Islamic Republic of Iran in different regions 
in Iran, including Khuzestan, Sistan, Balochistan, and Kurdistan. Second, to lobby for the establishment of a commission of inquiry by the UN Human Rights Council on gross violation of human rights committed in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And finally, as an epilogue, in a democratic future of Iran, there should be provisions relating to accountability and combating impunity in bringing the perpetrators of violations to account, whether in criminal, civil, administrative, or disciplinary proceedings that have to be incorporated into the Constitution, emphasizing the important role that should be played by an independent judiciary. Thank you for your attention. I will be more than happy to answer your questions.